we are talking about uh, harm, formal definitions of harm. Um, it's obviously related to AI systems. Mm -hmm. uh, even though the concept of harm has been around for a very long time. You think of Hippocratic oath that the doctors still take to this day. Uh, in particular, it says, I will do no harm right, to my patients. So the philosophers had this concept in front of them, and they wanted to define it for, for a long time. Um, and they essentially gave up on it. So there is a paper from as uh, recent as 2012. It's quite recent in philosophy, right? And computer science, it would be the dinosaur area 2012. It's just not, not relevant anymore. But in philosophy, it's practically yesterday. Um, so it's a paper by Bradley, a prominent philosopher, who says harm is a Frankensteinian jumble. We don't know what to do with it. We should just do away with harm and replace it by other more well-behaved notions. Right, but ignoring it doesn't make it go away, unfortunately, right? Um, and also now, so for example, we are facing an imminent, I think, um, uh, rise of autonomous cars on the road. So who is exactly going to be insured and against what? So it's very difficult, it's a very difficult question. So we really have to urgently define harm um, and, and to quantify harm, to define who is harming so when we have a car that is driven by a person, Pluto, then it's easy, right? So Pluto is careless and uh, there is an accident with another car. Pluto was uh, driving, so his insurance company has to, has to pay to uh, the injured one. Uh, but let's imagine that there are two autonomous cars. Now, this car, uh, there is a person inside and this car, there is also a person inside, but they are not driving. The autonomous cars are driving. And let's now imagine, so we, they're driving on the road and there is a safety fence, right? This one on the border of the road. So, so this autonomous car is driving Bob. Bob is actually completely um, distracted watching the previous computer file video. Quite a while ago now, I did a video on... And that. then the stationary car can be there for, for multiple reasons. It might be broken down, out of charge, etc. So now it has uh, three options. One of them is to alert Bob, who is distracted by the fascinating computer file video. Another one, to do nothing, to just crash into the um, stationary car, right? And this will be terrible, so Bob will die and the person inside the stationary car will die as well. And third is to crash into the safety fence, which means that Bob will be mildly injured. Based on the current proposition of how to deal with people who sit inside autonomous cars, they're not going to be considered drivers or responsible for any behavior of autonomous cars. Because how could they? They are completely distracted by the computer file videos. They're, they're not even looking at the road. The car is not going to count on Bob suddenly seizing control and somehow averting the crash. So the car chooses the option of crashing into the safety fence. So Bob is mildly injured, and now Bob wants to sue the manufacturers of the autonomous car or the software company who provided, that provided the algorithms, um, saying, well, I didn't expect that, right? I was injured. Um, you, you wronged me. Um, and the car manufacturers say, well, actually, this was the best possible outcome. So how, how can we formalize all this story and, uh, to get something, you know, to get to some conclusion? So first of all, we are um, putting all this discussion in the framework of causality, of course. So first of all, we would say that A harmed B uh, if, in particular, the action of A is somehow caused the result. Um, caused, I mean it in a very broad sense, so it is well defined, but we're not going into these formal definitions. Um, it had some influence on the outcome. Right? It's not completely irrelevant. It's not the fact that, that, um, uh, that currently it is uh, snowing in Siberia. Right? So it's, it, it is actually relevant to the current situation. Um, so, okay, so that's one. Two, um, there is another thing that, the, uh, that A, or you know, in this car, case the car, could have done that would have, would have avoided um, the, this outcome. Right? It would have caused another outcome. Maybe it's not a deal, but it's another outcome. And this outcome would have been better. 
Um, and by say caused, I mean that, that maybe some other things should have changed as well. But we can imagine a very similar scenario, which is slightly different, in which the car makes a different decision and it is a better outcome for, for Bob. Mm -hmm. uh, now, we'll, what we add to this, so this up, up to now it's more or less standard definition of causality, we add two things. First is the uh, utility function, which actually quantifies how much harm was done. So in this case, we can quantify the harm that was done uh, to Bob by injuring him uh, and contrast it with harm that could have been done to Bob if the, had the car crashed uh, into the stationary car and that Bob would have been dead, right? So this is a maximal harm, I guess, that you can cause uh, to Bob. Um, versus the utility of not harming Bob at all, which is what, what he expected. So that's one. Uh, and two is the default value. So why do we need the default value? Um, we need the default value. The default value is somehow the lowest possible utility, which is yet still not harm. Um, for that, imagine uh, the case was a birthday present, right? So you invite a friend over to a birthday party, friend comes over um, and brings you a, a 10, pound bot 10 pounds bottle of wine. Um, you're kind of a bit disappointed because you expected a fabulous present. In fact, you've been hinting to your friend that you expect this amazing brandy, 40 years brandy that you saw in, in the shop for 200 pounds. You have no idea. Anyway, 200 pounds. So yeah, you are disappointed, right? But you wouldn't say that your friend harmed you. I mean, it's still above the default. Your friend could have come empty-handed. So, okay, so we have a default, right, which is kind of the threshold, which is below the default is harm, but is above the default is not harm. So you're not especially happy, but you cannot say that your friend harmed you. In this situation, remember, um, the autonomous car uh, chose to, to crash into the safety fence. So first of all, what is the default? So Bob is saying the default is that I expected to get to where I'm going, to my destination, um, healthy, right? I left healthy, I expected to get healthy. What is this nonsense with injury? Um, okay, so first of all, we can, you know, we can accept that. Now, second of all, uh, if we talk about default and utility, we, we have to check whether this default is achievable. Whether there actually exists something that the car could have done uh, with slight modifications uh, of possible values of, of other factors um, that would have uh, resulted in a better outcome. Um, so in this particular case, the, the default, right? Because he wants to, to arrive unharmed. Um, and let's say that we are not thinking about the case where uh, the Bob's car would have driven straight towards the stationary car and then the stationary car teleported somewhere else and then continued driving. This is not possible. We're not considering this. We're not considering Bob's car suddenly becoming a Batmobile, I think Batmobile, and, and flying over. No, I mean, we are reasonable people. We're considering reasonable changes. So, okay, so in this case, I think we can safely say that the default was unachievable. Uh, and actually, any other possible outcome, so another possible outcome would have been to do nothing, to continue driving in the Lord Bob, or uh, to crash into the car in front. Um, and effectively, both of them would have resulted in a crash and Bob being dead. So there is nothing that the car would have done um, to make the situation better for Bob. Right? So this whole discussion leads to um, the decision that Bob was actually not harmed by the decision of the car. Right. So that's the concept of harm. Now, in order to actually decide uh, how much um, of the insurance premium uh, the company is going to pay, uh, we need to, to be able to quantify harm. So far, we hadn't quantified anything. We just decided that the car didn't harm Bob, right? According to these assumptions and to these um, defaults. Right. Let's imagine Alice. Yes, yeah, she's looking well. Excellent. Going to a restaurant and having a meal. And then this is Alice's waiter. Right? Also looking well. Not looking very happy. You'll see why. So Alice had a nice meal. And she got a bill of hundred dollars, right? So let's say we're in the U.S., hundred dollars. As we all know, U.S. is a tipping country. So now uh, they even, I think, they, they put um, options for tip underneath. So tip, so it will be like 20% is this, right? And 25% is... And they kind of pre-calculate the tip, assuming that you will tip 20% at least. So... Um, the, ex the waiter expects a tip of 20%, which is going to be, oops, $20. 
Okay, the problem is that the restaurant only accepts tips in cash and Alice didn't go by the ATM this morning or there was no ATM on the way to the restaurant. She only has $5 cash in her wallet. And she paid the, the bill with the credit card. Okay, so she gives the waiter the whole $5. The waiter is very unhappy, as we can see. Uh, but can we claim that Alice harmed the waiter, actually? No. Well, first of all, it depends on the default. I think we can, again, agree that default would be $20 uh, because the waiter has no idea, right? About I have to know this because I'm going to America soon. So uh, it's very important, very important. Very important. Yeah, yes, okay. 20, yes. 20%. Very 20% is expected, unfortunately, yes. Waiter expects $20. Now, is it achievable? If we say, well, it's not achievable because Alice only has $5, what, what is she going to do? Give her watch and earrings? There's nothing she can do. Um, then we'll say, well, $20 is unachievable. The maximum that's achievable is 5 And she gave $5. So therefore, there's no harm. That, that she, she's going to have to go out to the ATM, get some money out, come back and give it to the waiter. Right? Yes, exactly. So another uh, way to look at it is to say, no, $20 is entirely achievable. She should say to the waiter, um, I'm leaving my coat and my bag here. I'll be right back. Go out to the ATM, withdraw the money, come back and leave $20. So if to, if it's achievable, then she actually should have given him $20. And therefore, uh, she harmed him at um, $15, right? If we take utility the same as um, as the dollar amount. Okay, so, so this is the dilemma of achievable versus non-achievable. Um, and by the way, what happens if Alice decides that she needs to keep some money in her wallet, she doesn't want to empty it completely, and gives the waiter one dollar tip. Mm -hmm. So in this case, I think we can agree that she harmed the waiter regardless of whether ATM is closed by or not. Um, but the amount of harm is different. So if we say that the maximum that's achievable is five dollars, then she harmed the waiter at four dollars, right? Five minus one. If we say that the default is achievable, then of course she harmed the waiter at uh, 19, because that's going to be 20 minus 1. Why is harm better than utility or more interested? It's just utility. Because here, I think what we've done is more or less we subtracted utilities, right? Um, so let's talk about um, a doctor, doctor's dilemma. So we have a patient. Let's take another. I think this one is looking sufficiently miserable. So this is a patient and this is a doctor, right? So the patient is um, ill and the doctor uh, has a dilemma of whether to, to give the patient medication or to do a surgery. Okay, so medication will keep the patient stable. Let's say that if the patient is uh, healthy, that's going to be utility one, right, which is the best. If the patient is ill but not dead, it's going to be half, and dead is going to be zero. So medication will keep the patient stable at 0 0.5. Surgery uh, will cure the patient completely, except sometimes it, it fails, right? We all know sometimes surgeries don't end well. Maybe the patient is allergic to anesthesia, various uh, um possible causes that are not not um, under the doctor's uh, control. Okay, so it will cure the patient or it will kill the patient with some small probability p. Right? I think we're used to it if we are going to the hospital for even some minor procedure, we'll always have to sign a consent form that says there is small probability of um, etc. Et right? And then some horrible things that could happen. And let's say that p is small. So what is the expected utility from medication or from surgery? Let's say that the uh, physician is only basing their decision on, on utility. So medication, always guaranteed result, 0 0.5, right? So the expectation, so here is 0 0.5. That's, uh, that's the result of, of administering medication. For the surgery, the result is 1 minus P. It's a... Uh, 1 minus p is the probability of the successful surgery. Okay. So it's multiplied by 1 uh, plus p multiplied by 0, so it's 1 minus p. Okay. So the uh, expected utility is 1 minus p. Now, if p is small, as we assumed, as it 
usually happens with surgeries, otherwise we wouldn't be uh, undergoing them ever. Then, of course, surgery wins, right? 1 minus p is bigger than 0 0.5. Right, but that's utility. But let's now talk in, in terms of harm. So the patient has been ill for a while. They're kind of used to this unpleasant, mildly unpleasant feeling. For them, the default is 0 0.5. The default is how they are feeling right now. And now, uh, treating them with medication doesn't uh, result in anything lower than the default, right? So it's not going to harm them. It's just going to stabilize this, this uh, current uh, condition. In the contrary, uh, the surgery, so with the probability 1 minus p, it's going to um, completely cure them. So this is no harm, so this is above harm. But with probability p, it's going to actually result in patient death, which has the utility 0, which is 0 0.5 below to the default, right? So now we have the expected harm from the surgery is 0 0.5 phi, p and the expected harm from medication is zero. Hmm. So now we suddenly prefer medication. So these are just different ways of looking at the same thing, right? It is different ways of looking at the same thing, yet it solves quite a lot of um, moral dilemmas. How, how does this play into computer science then? So, so this uh, is very relevant to AI. Right, to AI systems, autonomous systems. Um, the adoption of autonomous systems uh, is not going to happen unless we figure all this out. Uh, it's not going to happen unless we figure out explanations, which is something that I talked about in my previous video. It's not going to happen until we figure out harm, and it's not going to happen until we figure out fairness. I think, uh, so for this particular subject of harm, um, the insurance companies are going to block the... Uh, regulation that, that allows the autonomous cars on the road, or rather they will refuse to insure the autonomous cars, which will block the uh, manufacturers of the autonomous cars from leasing them on the road, uninsured, um, until all this is figured out. If we kill Bill and we give his organs to, to those people, so five people will be healthy, and one person is going to be dead. So what happens if I cover this part? This is probably no longer a panda, right? This is not a panda. 